uh, yeah, so we're going to play some 10 minute games on our Smurf account here. And I'm sticking to 1d4, just playing the Queen's Gambit, just the classic stuff. d4, c4. I um, feel like this is, well, this has been my main line for many years, so this is the one I'm most familiar with, and I feel like I can explain a lot of the nuances here. But I also want to do an e4 speedrun in the future where I'll play all 1e4, and that one's just going to be a learning process for me as much as you guys. Okay, so Black is playing this odd move a6. It doesn't really follow typical opening principles, like you don't want to move rook pawns this early. It is a, a playable move, but we'll see how Black kind of follows up on this, because I'm not sure if he's exactly playing it for <laughs> the right reasons. Like, this is actually has is being played at the top level more and more often um, and will be a useful move especially if he just starts kind of like developing normally black can certainly make use of this a6 move later on hmm yeah what's the nature of d4 well the nature of d4 i would say is that it's a fight for the center you know a lot of times we're trying to take control over the e4 square like with the next move queen c2 the queen is kind of well placed to cover this square. Now he takes kind of early. Most players know that you kind of want to wait for the bishop to develop. Here he lets me take on c4 in one move. But now he plays b5, so fair enough. He's He played a6, now he goes b5. Kind of justifies this decision. In general, I think the bishop belongs on one of these two squares here. I'm going to put it on d3 because I feel like this often makes sense. Again, controlling e4 and kind of eyeing the uh, h7 pawn as well. Okay, bishop b7. Now the question is, are we worried about this one? If I could castle queenside, definitely not. I could castle queenside in this position. That would be kind of a fun way of playing. Although maybe not, I would say, objectively pretty risky. Um, I'm going to castle kingside. I think I want to play this one in a more classical style. I don't think we have to go all, all crazy. I would castle queenside if I thought it was the right approach. But here I think black would just play like knight d7, c5, and just get some counterplay very, very quickly. Okay, so he goes g6, blunting the bishop. On the other hand, weakening some of the dark squares. My first instinct in this position is to play just rook a d1, just bringing the rook to line up against the queen. In general, that's what we want to do. We can also play rook f d1. I'm not worried about bishop takes f3 in case that wasn't clear, I think. Uh, the light squared bishop is kind of more important for black in this position, and the king will still be kind of safe on g2. Um, so let's see here. We can go rook a d1, rook f d1, knight e5 is also a possibility. Bishop h6 is kind of a tempo, but rook e8, it's not clear if there's uh, such a good follow up because the bishop can be kind of useful on f4 as well. We can also play a move like a3 here, just stopping um, b4, but I don't think this one is super necessary yeah i'm gonna go ahead and play rook fd1 because i feel like this a rook can definitely be used on the c file so that's our plan and we're sticking to it yeah you know in general i would say we want to be extremely careful about allowing double pawns on the king side so let me make that clear um double pawns in front of your king is like some of the worst situations that you can have double pawns but this i would say is an exception because um white is going to then get the light squared bishop which is a good piece and also you kind of get to control the center especially this e4 square which again is very critical so black just doesn't have enough activity but there are exceptions to this in fact there are cases where black happily takes on f3 and then uh tries to punish white i mean we we might see here like knight h5 this is very very consistent like and who knows maybe i'm about to get made it and <laughs> eat my words um but i do think this position is good for white so let me try to prove it i'm gonna play bishop g3 if black takes then we fix the structure we get our king to g2 the rook goes to the h file that's kind of a nice nice setup for white and our king will be super safe and our structure will be fixed so bishop d6 of course correctly black doesn't take playing i think very reasonably absolutely um, and now I'm going to try to make use of the bishop. So like, this is kind of what my eyes are drawn towards. But okay, rook a7, it doesn't seem like that special. And in fact, the knight can also use this square. So knight e4 here is uh, for sure a candidate move as well. Kind of encouraging black to take. Um, yeah, let's play knight e4 here. Because like, if black takes with anything, 
we want our structure to improve. And I'm also taking away the g5 square from the queen. I'm trying to be mindful of the time, like I don't want to just like spend all my time explaining every <laughs> every move and then flagging <laughs> in, a, in a winning position. So we got to keep in mind that this is a rapid game and in rapid, you don't have time like in classical to actually think about your moves. You do have to kind of make decisions relatively quickly and just kind of go with it. So right now our idea is to go king g2, rook h1, f4. <laughs> we have a very uh, coordinated strategy. I actually really like the position a lot for why I like this knight kind of covering all the dark squares. We have our light squared bishop. And now we have actually a classic middle game with opposite color bishops um, where the general logic is the side with the initiative is strongly favored um, with opposite color bishops on the board. Okay, so knight d7. I think I just want to go king g2 here. Just get the rook ready to join the h file. Not that this is going to be like checkmate, but it's just just an obvious improvement we can make in our position. Hey, what's up, Faba? <laughs> Good to see you. Okay, Rick C. Well, it's clear what black wants, but for the moment, bishop on d6 is hanging, so maybe maybe f5 is his next move. So let's play f4 here. Then on f5, we can go knight g5 and immediately put pressure on the e6, e6 pawn and kind of explain to black why f5 <laughs> might not have been their best move. Knight on g5 would be sick. I'm really hoping we get knight on g5. Okay, question in the chat. Is it important to be able to call out coordinates quickly? Um, I don't know. It is something that most players do learn at some point. I did have to practice. Like, I would try to visualize a blank board. I would think of some square, c5, e5. And then I would try to figure out, is this a light square or a dark square? So that's how I kind of trained for, I just did it for a little bit, like a week, and then <laughs> and then I was fine. So I don't think you have to train for that long, but it is something worth thinking about. <clears throat> so knight c5, we're considering takes, queen takes, queen d5, can get this end game, which is not bad for black. You can also play rook ac1 here and just allow the trade. Okay guys, I'm going to play a3. I think it's time... You know, queen c6 is also an interesting move. Just kind of fixing black's position. Yeah, let's play queen c6. I mean, this actually... It does feel kind of oppressive because we're blocking the pawn. Of course, it's hard for black to play c5, and we're not letting go of this blockade. So knight e4, bishop e4, if black wants to trade queens. We can think about even taking the a pawn. I mean, that's that's the other thing about this kind of move. Like, I don't even know if I want this pawn. Maybe I do, right? Like, really, maybe I do. But now black definitely has to think about whether I'm going to take it. So whether or not we want the pawn is irrelevant. They have to think consider this move. And of course, we know if black plays rook a8, that's like... That's just a win. Our piece is active, their piece is passive. That's all we need. Then we'll continue, we'll figure out what to do from there. All the other moves we could play, like rook c1, a3. Okay, so there we go. So like already, queen c6 is justified. I mean, probably we were threatening, to be fair. So what 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 is black supposed to do, right? Now let's just improve the rook. Um... Central NJ, I'm not sure I understand your comment because this was definitely not a King's Indian. Okay, 95, I think, is headed towards this square, so probably we should go A3 to cover that one. What are my thoughts on the Baltic defense? It's not that good. <laughs> Sorry. I would just play the Slav if you're looking for something simple and solid. No, no worries, Central. No worries. I just didn't understand. Um, okay, so King G7. Yeah, that reminds me. I wanted to go Rook H1. Thank you for like the reminder. <laughs> this is our this is our general plan, <clears throat> and maybe just doubling up and seeing what happens if Black goes H5. That's kind of another weakness. Maybe one day we can even think about breaking with g4. 
which might be cool. Okay, my queen's not going to stay on c6 forever, though, because this is kind of weird. At some point, I'm going to want to reroute it to the, uh, the king side if we don't find some kind of useful exchange. Another move we can play at some point is b4, just fully fixing the c5 square for in the position. Hey, thanks for following, x cobalt. Okay, knight b6. So what's the idea here? Black wants to go knight a4? Not quite getting it. Okay, I'm gonna pull the queen back. And I'm gonna be eyeing some sacrifices already, like some stuff like this and like this. Yeah, this is gonna be, there's some potential here <laughs> for the attack. Kind of a nice example of when we wanna kind of focus on targets. We'll see if it works out for white, who knows? Who knows? Um, but let's play knight to g5. And uh, okay, on h6 there, I think we were just about ready to sack. So here, black defends like this. So I'm looking for just like forcing moves here, basically. <laughs> That's what I'm doing, but I don't really see much. So I'm just going to uh, play for the double. And then h6, we can just go rook h1, I'm pretty sure. Note that, guys, the pawns are all in the dark squares, right? Because we don't have a dark square bishop. We got to fight against this guy. This is one of the things that sometimes is like confusing like when you play against the bishop do you want to put your pawns opposite or on the same color a lot of times on the same color is the way to actually restrict the bishop okay black wants to go c5 but at this point i think we're clearly faster so let's do it now if h6 we have this nice tactic we can just take twice then we have knight takes f7 at the end classic knight take knight to g5 uh shenanigans <laughs> this knight on g5 I mean, strongest attacking piece of all time. Okay, let's focus. Man, knight of six, good move. Is it time for e4, e5? I think we have to. I think we have to. I didn't want to. This kind of weakens our own structure, but this knight on f6 is such a good defender that I think we kind of have to. And then on knight h5, we're likely sacking. You know, it's just too much. Is g4 would be kind of hard to prepare with a knight on uh, knight hitting f4. Okay, now it's time to get concrete. So c5, e5, if takes, we're taking with check, so that's good. Okay, bishop e7. Let's push. Now it has to play knight h5, otherwise we're taking on h7. And now I think we just want to sack here. I don't really see. I don't really see why not, especially given the fact that time is getting lower. But now let's be careful here because this one is hanging too. Hmm. Man, really sharp position. Maybe knight back to f3. I'm not sure if this is the right thing to do, but I'm just trying to keep everything under control. Man, guys, tough first game, I'll tell you. <laughs> Who knows? Might be a tough first game, but I, I like our chances. I mean, I don't know. The king is weak. We got rook takes h5 coming. We got f5 that I'm just going to play immediately because this actually kind of opens up the king side in the way that we want. And now we just have a full 3-0 blitz game. So time is now becoming extremely important. Yeah. Let's get the pawn to f6. This one is a strong asset. And uh, now I think this bishop is a real big target. So let's just take this one. And queen c5 check also looks tempting. Let's throw this in. Actually, let's not. Let's, let's just take. Now we're threatening to take here. <laughs> I couldn't decide. Do I want 
maybe I did want it because now queen d5, but queen d5 we have bishop e4. To be fair, I didn't really anticipate, but okay, our pieces are well coordinated. I'll take the win. And then, of course, we're ready to take this one next. Still, d4 pawn is going to be hanging here, so this is still not over. Far from it. <clears throat> okay, but maybe we give check. King g8. Take, take. Oh, that looks like money. We give check. So if here we have this one, and here we're just mating, and, and black isn't able to uh, take this one. Okay, GG. Wow. Cool game, huh? <laughs> I mean, real rating is around like 20, 2400 feet a, you know. Okay, we're going all d4, c4. And uh, we can play knight f3 here. You can also play knight c3, which allows the, uh, the Nimzo Indian. Although I'm not a fan of this one. Now I'll play knight c3 because got to develop our knights. Okay, c6. So this is called the semi-slav. There's different moves here. There's like bishop g5 and there's e3. I'm a fan of these e3 positions. This is like simple and solid. Bishop b4. Okay, I mean, not the best move. Like, when you play Nimzo Indian style, you don't really want to commit c6 super early because it's not clear. Because in a lot of positions, you actually want to play c5 and get the, the counterplay. So this is actually kind of mixing ideas a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and play bishop d3. I'm not worried about these double pawns because I can just exchange one of them off almost immediately. Like, so we're really not worried about that. I'm just going to go ahead and castle here. So we want to get our king out of the center. And at some point I might even play a3 and just like, just ask the question, like, what's up, dude? Like, <laughs> what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Like, are we taking or no? And and I'll even invest the tempo in that because I, I do want the dark sword bishop. Because then I'll play a4, even losing another tempo, but the bishop will get to a3. And then that's kind of a nice diagonal. Yeah, I think I wrote in the bio that it's uh, a smurf account. Pretty sure. Maybe not. I don't know, but I'm sure the link to the stream is there, so <laughs> they should be able to see it that way. Yeah, guys, we're trying to get to 10,000 followers. 17 days left. Okay, rookie 8. So maybe hinting at e5 one day. We have a couple of plans. e4, I think, doesn't work because of takes, takes, and then black will take on e4. So that would be kind of nice. Could play a3. I'm actually just going to go ahead and play queen c2. I think the queen kind of likes this square. And now if I want to, I can also recapture with the queen, which is nice. Hey, JMC, how's it going? When's the next gauntlet? Um, Hopefully this weekend. We try to do it every weekend in general. Why does it take 100 games to get to 1800? Man, I don't know. How long does it usually take? <laughs> we started at 800. And I played, I played games so that I, before I started the run, so that I wasn't provisional. So, yeah. So I, I got like eight points per win <laughs> this run. <laughs> That's awesome, JB. We did add the bomb cloud to the gauntlet. I actually played a game with the bomb cloud. That was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. So I only started the run at 800 and when my, because... Because otherwise, if you have a provisional rating, you win the, f the first few games, you just shoot up, right? So it's not, you don't kind of get to see the process. Like, I wanted people to see the full grind, 800, <laughs> 800 and up. So it takes some time. Okay, h6, so covering the h7 pawn, that's solid. Black is definitely playing a little passive here. Makes me want to go for like a 95 f4 plan, which I think is um, totally reasonable. Yeah, let's play 95 here. Let's just go for the... Uh, the Pillsbury stuff. This is the Pillsbury attack where you play f4, you just cement this knight, and then um, try to attack on the king side around it. I think it's a very dangerous um, construction because whenever they take, of course, we go fe and open up the rook. And if they don't take, then they have to live with this knight forever. Okay, now I'm tempted actually to go c5 and just like shut the bishop in. Like if he's really gonna, if he's gonna play games with me, then we're gonna play games, but. Not sure if he's gonna want to play games. All right, let's play c5. Now he has to be careful that his bishop is not gonna get like caught on the uh, queen side. Important to note that like b6, this typical uh, counterattacking move, 
runs into knight takes c6. So this knight on e5, I mean, is very oppressive. Like, it really controls a lot of key squares. A Aaron, we would definitely take with the f pawn here. But Grey Wolf, we wouldn't be able to call it the Bond Cloud then. I mean, the whole point is that people people want to see someone play the Bond Cloud. So I think. <laughs> I think that will kind of defeat the purpose. Okay, um, let's see. So one idea is to try to transfer the queen here. This is a nice way to attack in these kinds of positions. Um, we can also again play a3 and pop the question to the bishop, but I don't think we really need to. Let's go ahead and play queen f2 here because black is not really challenging us i mean maybe can play b6 now now that c6 is defended in fact i think that's probably uh, a decent move but we're gonna go for the attack so our plan here is to do something like queen to g3 and actually i'm not sure from there maybe some f5 ideas okay he takes we're gonna take back that kind of simplifies our task 94 fair enough wants to get the knight here we can definitely consider taking this one and then trying to round up the pawn. Hmm. Or we can just ignore it and uh, and focus on the attack. Let's think for a second here. Also, we we'll just start with queen c2. And black will probably play f5 and do this like stonewall thing, regardless of <laughs> whether we take or not. So the question is, do we want to take? I think we do actually, because when we take here, before black has a chance to play f5, black of course has to take with uh, the d-pawn here, and then we get the c4 square for our knight, which gives us access to a d6. So I like the idea of using that square. Okay, now do, do we want to force black to play f5, or do we not? Care. I think we don't really care. So rook b1, he'll go b6. Play bishop a3. And also think about playing a4 here first. Just to gain some space and then, then put the bishop behind the pawn. Yeah, let's 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 play a4. Let's win a word it up. <laughs> this is what they do in the French. So the game is kind of shifting here. Like at first we were looking for a kingside attack, but now like this c4 square is kind of white's like main advantage that I'm seeing. <laughs> You're welcome, AA Ron. In fact, I have a sweater with your name on it, like literally. Yeah, so the dark squared bishop is um, planning to go here because I'm kind of expecting black to play b6 at some point. If they don't play b6, they're going to feel really squeezed after like a5, a6, <laughs> you know, bishop a3, rook fb1. So the bishop kind of wants to sit on a3, but if they really don't play, actually one day it can kind of snake out this way. This is a typical idea in the stone wall. And this is actually the main idea behind the tromp wall opening that I have a video on YouTube about where you first get the bishop out and then you try to make this happen. Okay, f5. So let's push a5. I think we're just gonna go for the squeeze here. And now we don't have to rush with a6 because that will just invite b6. We can build up maybe bishop. Not sure if we can play this one. Maybe this might be hanging, but we wanna go like bishop a3, rook fb1, and just kind of start putting pressure on the queen side. Again, knight c4, knight d6. This is kind of our target now. And because black played h6, now it's like, actually, hard to challenge this knight. So I like our chances. It's not like the checkmate attack we were hoping for, but, you know, we'll have to take the, uh, we'll have to take the positional advantage.
Knight is stronger than Rook on E8. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now... Now this feels very flimsy. I feel like we take, take. Okay, concrete tactics taking over. Take, take. Then we just win that pawn, right? Don't see a way for black to uh, win that one back. So let's just keep it simple. We'll take. We'll pre-move that. And we can take this one. I mean, we can pre-move this as well. Like, of course, he's going <laughs> to take the rook. And now we, if we need to support the pawn, we got this one. We have knight c4. Knight c4 is tempting because it also comes with knight d6 as a threat. And now black has to deal with that. And we get our bishop to a3 here next. Maybe this can kind of jump in on, on the diagonal. Nice demonstration again, the opposite color bishop. Second game in a row, right? Where we had opposite color bishops. And again, it's all about like whose bishop is stronger in these middle games. Here, black's bishop, of course, is like doing nothing. And uh, yeah, white is enjoying a good time. Okay, rook a8, good move. I'm going to play bishop a3. This is a little flimsy. In fact, queen a6 is kind of an annoying move, but I think we were okay there. We just defend. Um, and yeah, I just want to like, I just want to start planting. <laughs> this is what I call planting, where you plant stuff. Queen e2, e5. Oof, I don't know. Maybe I missed something there. Yeah, it was a little awkward. It's like farming, exactly, but we're not really cultivating any soil. We're more just like putting stuff somewhere all right now the pieces are cool we can push if we want to or we can continue improving i kind of like this queen b2 idea because like i don't think there's a reason we have to push right away does allow queen d3, maybe a little bit annoying, but um, I just kind of want to save this one. Maybe maybe we can even allow queen takes e3. Might not be a huge deal. Don't takes knight g4. It is annoying. Yeah, queen d3, good move. The question is, do we spend the tempo here playing rook e1 or... Wait, wait, knight g4, we have this one covered, right? Hold up. Push, take, king moves here, here. GG, GG, yeah. okay, right, so we're just gonna go ahead and say that we're not afraid. We are not afraid, and we will not be intimidated. H3 seems useful in this kind of, yeah, I wish, I wish H3 happened at some point, to be honest with you. I would feel a lot more secure about the position. Absolutely. Oh yeah, there's a question about switching from the scotch. Yeah, I think in general you don't have to switch your openings unless you hate it. <laughs> like if you hate the line, then it's time to switch. That's honestly what happens. People like, you just stop liking the positions, right? And so you just don't want to play it anymore. And that's totally fine. You know, you can, it, it's in fact, it's useful for your growth to uh, to play different positions. So that can happen at any point, you know, I, I would say the scotch, I mean, objectively, the opening is fine. You can play that forever. Like there's lots of grandmasters who, that play the scotch. So <laughs> like you can play it for a long, long time, right? Long time. Okay. This is a common attacking pattern. This one, the king comes out to g6, then the knight snakes back to e5 and the king can no longer go back, has to go to like h5, but there's no like mate there. We're just going to like take on g7 or something. So the question is... Do we want to play h3 or not? We definitely could, but I kind of think we should just go for the attack right away. Because I don't see a good way for black to defend. On the other hand, here, maybe bishop e8, knight e5, but then knight e5, and we cover the g4 square. So, yeah, I think here it's like attack is kind of the best form of defense. Of course, we can play h3, that's fine too, but, you know, actually, it's not that clear. Like, h3, knight h5... Then we have to deal with that problem. Maybe not so good. Um, 
here we're like i like that we're just making a concrete threat right 95 king h5 we take here and uh black's king is suffering okay knight g4 so good move so i was expecting to just give the check and then just trade on e5 here and i'm just gonna say we have an extra rook and that should be enough to win the game hey thanks for fabio <laughs> fabio thanks for following fabio okay now it's all about the targets again so let's just come in and finish him once and for all um yeah viewers can challenge me if you're like around this rating like within 50 points or so absolutely But uh, that's going to be a GG for me. I don't understand what you don't understand. All right. Let's play Queen's Gambit. All right. Black is playing. Looks like a King's Indian. So we're just going to develop and we're going to take some space here. D6. And uh, I'm going to go for this line. This is the one I made a YouTube video about. I like this line against the King's Indian where you play H3. Then you put the bishop on e3 so you don't get hit with knight g4. And then this knight can come out to e2 in many cases, or in some cases, uh, f3. Okay, knight c6. Totally reasonable move. Um, I think against this one, we do want to develop the knight to f3, because against e5, we're going to want to push d5 here. And now black is kind of playing in this typical way, but this isn't exactly the same thing as like a normal King's Indian. In this case, White's idea is to try to put pressure on the king side and actually not not castle here like White normally does, but actually go queen side. Even though it's more riskier, but uh, the the center is closed, so we can kind of get away with this one. Although it is a shame this knight is on f3. Honestly, I wish I, I wish it was on g3. But what to do? Okay, so here we have a couple moves. We can go like bishop d3. I think this is logical, kind of setting up for Black's f5, which of course. They want to play let's take this one and this is our idea to open up the g file now we can go rook g1 which allows f4 or we can take on f5 which will um keep the position more open i think we take on f5 here all right knight f5 wow that happened very quickly okay let's get this tempo and now we're just going to try to use the e4 square really interesting game i mean so far black is playing so, uh, quite logical. Hey, Matt Sitter, thanks for following. Thanks for following everyone. Sir John, Murfer, Mr. Fur. Hope I got that right. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Papa. Thanks. Much appreciated. Well, we're trying. You know, we're trying. There's three of us. There's me. There's David. There's Jesse. And we each have our own opinions on what's important in chess. Hey, D12 Loftus. Thank you for following. Welcome to the channel. We're trying to get to 10,000. 17 days to go. We're not on track. We, we need some help. <laughs> we're not on track to make it. I mean, we, we've been getting like, I don't know maybe 1500 followers a month for the past couple months so we're not you know but we, if we get a slight push we can do it but <laughs> we're gonna have to pick up the pace um so i'm gonna be streaming more often doing more streams i mean this is fun you know we all love chess obviously and i uh i've been really enjoying doing the speed run because it actually it gives me a lot of ideas about what are the types of problems that players are facing at these different levels uh that they need to overcome if they want to get to the next level so it's helping me as like a chess coach understand like what kind of material and content i should be making all right let's put the nine on e4 have we told um, 
<laughs> Other chess streams about the follower goal. No, we have not. In fact, I don't even know if David and Jesse know about it. I, <laughs> I mean, we, we all have this 10,000 number in mind, but... Yeah, we're not all we're not all super <laughs> up to speed. I did have I do believe that we will have more followers than the price of Bitcoin by the end of the year, and that's not a comment on Bitcoin or the number of followers we're gonna have. <laughs> it is a comment on both. Okay, Queen F7. Um, so we do want to at some point castle Queen side, bring this other rook to G1. But I want to be mindful that this line on f3 doesn't start to just hang. So maybe queen e2? Hmm. Also, queen d2 h6 is kind of uh, a problem. Yeah, I'm going to play queen e2 here. Queen c2 maybe was a thought as well. I want to keep an eye on this one. And then if h6, I can pull the bishop back to d2. So I kind of have a square for the bishop as well. Always important to try to just keep your setup in mind making sure that all your pieces have good squares. Oh, Jesse mentions it. Oh, good. Good. Um, I, we, I think we are close to getting to partner. I mean, it's hard to say because in terms of like viewer numbers, like it's not as simple as just seeing the number of viewers that we have because viewers from like embeds and hosts and raids and stuff don't, uh, don't count for the partner application. So it's kind of hard to judge how close we actually are, but I think we're on the way. Well, we're well on the way. It's definitely something that's going to happen at some point. So I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so we got our king safe. Now we want to do this one or maybe this one, maybe double on the G file as well at some point. And um, yeah, we just are trying to use this e4 square. Um, this is kind of our main strategic advantage in the position. Maybe the queen can actually back it up. This bishop sometimes even goes to c3 just to keep an eye on the d4 square. Black could play knight d4 at any moment, but then we're just going to trade it off. e takes d4, and then we'll probably just back the bishop up to d3, or maybe even play queen d3 or something there, just to keep that pawn uh, blockaded. So we're kind of... We're working on the light squares here. Yeah, Hikaru got 1 million. That's right. I mean, that that's amazing. So we're trying to get a tenth. No, <laughs> tenth. We're trying to get 1% of that. <laughs> Just 1%. We're trying to get the 1%. <laughs> Knight d4. So I think we're forced to trade. Now this pawn is kind of hanging, but the question is, do we really need to defend it? Like we can just go rig g1 and threaten this one, which is actually super annoying for black. Even like we don't even have to spend a tempo on queen d3, I'm thinking. Like if d3, we'll just take it and then black's not really in time to do anything with that. Bishop is coming to c3. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead I'm gonna play rook to g1 here. Now this is a classic position or a classic type of position where like the pawns just like don't matter in this position. Like just, number of pawns does not matter. It's just all about the pieces. Like opposite sides castling. Look at this guys, the knights are off. Remember who was at the book club earlier? No knights in this position. Which means the tempo of play is like a lot faster. No maneuvering, you know, we're ready to pop it. Why h rook and not d rook? Well, actually, because like I didn't see what the h rook is gonna do here. Whereas the d rook, I thought one day can um, be used on the f file or the e file or something. You know, who knows? But the h rook, I think, is just gonna be passive. No way to open the h file. Okay, king h8. Now, of course, in every position we can kind of consider sacking, but we want some kind of follow up there. We can take and go queen h5. Actually, that's kind of Annoying. Let's calculate this for a sec. Take, queen takes, queen h5. We're trying to just go bishop takes h6, dark squared bishop. Super strong. If 
queen e5, we take on h6 with the queen of queen f6. This bishop takes h6 anyway. Looks super dangerous for the king. Okay, maybe rook f6, black can play, right? Rook f6, queen e8 check, rook f8. Queen h5, rook f6. Rook f6, kind of annoying defense. I mean, I still like white's position there, but now I'm thinking, is it really necessary? You know, I mean, our position is good, and if the sack isn't so clear, then maybe it's not so important. Hey, thanks for following, Abhishek, and we're not. Yeah, rook g6 also a thought, absolutely. Let's just, let's just check again. Take, take, queen h5, rook f6. I don't really have anything fancy like rook g1 there. I mean, maybe there's like h4, but no, no, bishop g4. Yeah, unfortunately it doesn't really work for us, so we're gonna have to kind of prepare this idea or just like lift the rook. Even just rook g3. Takes, 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 rook g1. Yeah, let's just lift the rook here. So our calculation is this, take, take, rook takes f2, rook dg1. If bishop moves, we have rook g8 checkmate. So rook f7, and then we can't take on h6 because bishop takes is actually check. Otherwise we would have rook g8 mate, but we can just kind of slowly build. Okay, bishop f5, never mind. Black just does this one. Take, take, take on g7, take, rook check. Mm, no, not so clear anymore. Okay, how about take, take, rook g1, then rook f7. Actually, we're... No, black is really uh, holding this one. Yeah, I think we gotta go here. And then we're threatening to take on g7. Hey, thanks for following the freaking cookie monster. Wow, amazing username. Yeah, they're rounding up. Twitch is rounding up. Bishop f5 would have been a good answer to rook g6, that's true. Okay, bishop e5. Wow, could be a good move. So let's see, take, take. Take. Bishop f4 check, oof, we lose the bishop. Maybe just f4? I'm not sure we can do it. Take on e4, take on e5. Actually, maybe we can try this one and try to take the dark squared bishop. So bishop takes e4, we just go f takes e5. We don't take on e4, because then maybe black can even take on f4. Now, I'm not sure I see such a, I mean, maybe that's still okay for white, like rook g4 or something. I'm not really sure, but I think taking on e5 is the way to go here, because then we get the dark squared bishop, and our dark squared bishop becomes a beast. So does their light squared bishop, but we got the initiative, so we're kind of banking on our bishop takes h6 threat in that position. Can we get to 7900? Let's do it. Let's do it. We need 33 more people. Problem is everyone is already following. <laughs> Or, I don't know, most people that are watching are probably falling. Maybe not everyone. Hey, there we go. There we go. All right, take. I, I should focus on the game. <laughs> yeah, everyone... Go make a new email address. No. <laughs> um, the nice thing about the embed is that it kind of boosts us. So we're able to um, get our channel visible to more viewers. And that definitely helps with followers. So it's not like the embed is, is not helpful. So we can advance the pawn. It's always nice to get that one in. Or we can just immediately take on h6 here. Or g8 probably. And then we have bishop g7 check just winning. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and take this one. Because this is just a very difficult threat for black to deal with. That's right, Ocratic. I've been doing the King's Indian speedrun. I mean, we I have uh, you know a couple of previous episodes on, on YouTube. On the big old YouTube. Okay. Now let's see, what are we doing here? We can go e6 even. No, queen f4 check. All right, let's go here. Now king f8 seems forced. And this is where we just gotta look for the knockout. My instincts here is to just try to mate the king on the dark squares, right? Queen d2, check this way. A rook g7 also looks completely winning, just trapping the queen. Uh, in fact, actually, rook g7 looks... Oh, but there's queen takes f6, right? We gotta watch out for that. It wasn't possible because we were given check, but here it actually, we have to be a little careful. Although even that's probably okay for white, but queen d2, queen h5. Yeah, we should be all right. <laughs> we'll find something. Maybe just e6 there, just kind of lock in that king. Maybe even we have like, so this is the idea. Actually, queen h5, can we just immediately, oh, we just immediately can give rook g8 check. Take, take, king takes, queen g2, and then queen g7 mate. Let's do it. Come on, queen h5, let's go. Come on, queen h6 is a big threat. You gotta defend this one. <laughs> Rick takes e5, that's no fun. And probably a good move, actually. Hey, thanks for following. Okay, let's give this check. And then we're gonna go rook to g7. Very important, trying to be ultra careful, careful here, like not allowing any any crazy checks against my king. But this should do it, because now black is having a lot of issues. And if queen h5, we have some options we can take and go rook e7. And that's just going to be killer, or even rook e1 maybe. Get queen f8. I think we just take here. Keep it real simple, and then we're gonna give queen e6 check. And then that's gonna do it. No need to be uh, fancy, fancy pants. Bishop g6, I think we can always uh, take it there. Okay, that's gonna be a GG.